Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'm your reviewer for today. I am Cinema77, horror and cult film lover. And today we're going to talk about the Spanish Answered Hostel. We're going to talk about the 2006 movie H6, Diary of a Serial Killer. Now this movie is directed by Martin Garrido Barone and stars Fernando Asaco as Antonio Frau. Now the movie begins, this is, you know, a pretty disturbing movie, um, obviously put by Tartan Video, but now this is a pretty disturbing movie, and uh, the movie starts off, you have Antonio, he's having an argument with his girlfriend, and his girlfriend's talking about she wants to leave, and she's, you know, she's tired, she, you know, she wants to get out of the relationship and everything else, but Antonio's like, no, you're not going to leave me, and everything else. And so he's hitting her and she's like, you know, you bastard, you hit me. You're never going to put a hand on me again and all this other kind of stuff. And so, you know, she just wants to get away from him, but he's one of these kind of guys. He's all like, no, nobody leaves me, that kind of a thing. And he ends up killing her, strangles her to death. So, um, he ends up going to prison. Time passes. He comes out of jail and then, um, he ends up meeting this woman named, uh, Francesca. And they get married, and it turns out he inherited basically like a brothel. And it's this big, huge building. It's run down and all this other kind of stuff. And Francesca, his wife, she's wanting him to sell the place off. And, you know, they could take the money and move someplace. She's talking about having a, a regular family life. She's talking about she wants to have kids. And he's like, you know, I can't stay in kids and things like that. And um, come to find out that, you know, even though he knows this, he pretends that he doesn't know it. She ended up marrying him because basically just kind of keep up appearances. She works nights as a nurse in a hospital. And while she's married to him, she's having an affair with a doctor who's also married. And um, so basically he's just kind of, it's just to make it kind of look legitimate, which he's actually fine with. Now he gets this, um, you know, he inherits this old hostel and he thinks that it basically is like a sign from God that he's supposed to go and uh, save people like, you know, help the less fortunate and things like that, help them see the light and the path towards God and things like that. So he starts keeping a journal and he's, you know, detailing all this stuff. And, it, you know, he tells his wife, you know, actually, it's fine. You can work your night shift job and everything. It'd be OK. And all this other kind of stuff, which, you know, she goes along with because she's carrying on her affair with this married doctor. And, um, you know, at first he keeps telling her he wants to have sex with her. She won't let him have sex with her and everything else. And, uh, so anyway, so she's going out to work her you know job on the night shift and everything. And while she's doing that, he's going out and he's kind of, you know, cause the, uh, the brothel that they're living in is really in this kind of really skeezy neighborhood and, and there's a lot of uh, prostitutes and drug addicts and things like that, you know, just kind of walking around this neighborhood and stuff. And um, so he ends up um, he ends up meeting this one prostitute, you know, well, he ends up meeting more than one. But, you know, he ends up meeting these prostitutes and then um, he invites them in and he gives them food. He tells them, you know, like they can have a place to stay, things like that. <clears throat> and. Um, so, you know, he's telling these girls, you know, come on, I'll show you your room and all this. And he takes them up to this room, says H6 on the door. And when he takes them into the room, you know, it, it looks very much like a set from Dexter. You know, I mean, it's the whole, the ceiling, the walls, the floor, everything is completely all, you know, um, covered in plastic and everything else. And there's a table in the middle of the room. And um, he's, you know... Like before he takes the girls into the room, he takes them up and, and he gives them laundry and everything that belongs to his wife. And he tells them, try it on. You know, if you like it, you can have it and all this other kind of stuff. You know, it's just a way to get them to basically do what he wants. So he gets them into this room and he tells them, I'm going to tie you the table and I'm going to screw you and then I'll pay you and then you can go on your way and everything else. And, and the girls, you know, they, they're definitely reluctant at first, you know, but, um, you know, they're able to, they finally, they agree to do what he wants to do. And so they get on the bed or they get on the table and he ties them down. And then, you know, like he'll leave them, you know, strapped down to this table. He'll leave them there for like days and he'll go in and he'll repeatedly rape them over and over again. And, uh, um, he'll talk to them, asking them if, if they believe in God and do they see the light and everything else. And, um, do they, you know, 
want to be purified and everything else. And, and, um, one thing I got to say about the actresses who play the prostitutes, they do a really good job. They're very convincing. They come across as, as very sympathetic. You totally understand what's, you understand their anger, their frustrations, their sadness, things like that. And, um, you know, they really do build up these characters, which kind of actually ends up working against you because what ends up happening is he decides that these women are, are, they're no longer worth saving or whatever else. So he figures the best thing he can do is just give them over to God. So what he ends up doing is he ends up taking a chainsaw and he cuts them limb from limb and disposes of the body parts and everything else. And some of them actually some of the body parts he actually keeps and he ends up cooking and, and feeding his wife. His wife is always going on and on about, you know, what a great cook he is and everything else. And she doesn't realize that, that he's cooking up, you know, the body parts and organs and stuff of, of his victims and feeding them to her. So this goes on for a while and everything. <clears throat> At one point he meets a, a prostitute who's being beaten on by her pimp. And so the pimp, um, you know, he, he tells the pimp, you know, yeah, come on over to my place. You know, you guys can stay and everything else and all this stuff. And he's all like, you know, yeah, her and I, you know, we'll get it on and stuff, but let's go in, you know, we'll have food and drink and celebrate and all this stuff. So they go in and everything. And, um, so, uh, you know, they're partying and all this stuff. And so Antonio, he takes this, this pimp named Quran, you know, he's taking him upstairs and, and, uh, you know, it turns out, you know, they're going up these really long flights of stairs and everything else. And, uh, so, you know, he's, uh, the pimp is talking about, you know, yeah, you know, the, you know, pimp talk, you know, it's, oh, you know how these bitches are, you got to beat them once in a while, you know, keep them in line and all this other kind of stuff. So they reach the top flight of these stairs and, and, and Antonio ends up pushing the guy down the stairs and he keeps knocking him down the stairs over and over and over again and everything else. And, um, he's ready to go do his routine with this prostitute. He's got her in his wife's lingerie and, um, you know, give it her high heel shoes, but she drops her bag on the floor and these, uh, Virgin Mary cards fall out. And he's, he asks her about them and, and she's talking about like, yeah, you know, like the pimp, he thinks I'm st the reason he's beating on me is because he thinks I'm stealing money from him, but actually I'm taking the money so I can go home be with my family again. And, you know, I believe in God. And do you believe in God? And he's like, yeah, I believe in God. And so, you know, he's all like, can I have one of those Virgin Mary cards? She's like, yeah. And, you know, she kisses it, gives it to him, you know, um, you know, hopefully, you know, the good Lord will protect you and stuff like that. So he decides he's going to let her go. And uh, meanwhile, his wife, she's, you know, um, <clears throat> You know, she's having this affair with this doctor, but she's getting fed up because he's not going to leave his wife for her. And she's just tired of all the bullshit and everything. And she just decides she's going to go ahead and try to see if she can, she's going to break off this relationship with him. She's going to try to see if she can make it work, work with Antonio. And so they're going to her mother's funeral and she admits that her and her mother never got along. And, you know, her mother, you know, just kind of, um, neglected her, her whole life. And she just doesn't really have any sympathy for her mom and things like that. So they go to the funeral, they meet her father and Antonio witnesses, uh, her father committing suicide. And so, um, they get back from the funeral and then the invest, the detectives are there. They're wanting to know like, you know, Hey, can we come in? Can we search the place? Because here's the problem. You know, we have this prostitute that we have in lockup and she had a bad reaction to drugs or something like that. And she's saying that, um, that, uh, you know, her pimp is here at the, and, you know, at this place and everything. So can we look and everything? And so, you know, Antonio's all like, well, you know what? He's like, I know you, you're an investigator. You might have, a, and you were the guy who investigated me and put me in jail back in the day. So I know you got a case of the ass against me and everything else. And so, um, he's all like, you know, you go get a, you know, you go get a restraint, uh, not restraining order, but, uh, um, a search warrant. And then you come back and then I'll let you, you know, check my place and everything else. And so he's telling his wife, yeah, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal and everything else. He's all like, you know, just go to work. Everything will be fine. And so he ends up, um, sorry, I'm going to have to kind of get into spoilers here a little bit. So just so you know, yeah, a little bit of spoilers here. But, um, so anyway, so his wife, is, she goes to work. So he goes about cleaning up the whole thing. You know, he's getting all the evidence removed and everything else. And then, um, um, you know, he's, 
clearing out all the plastic. He's making sure everything, the weapons he used to commit his crimes are all disposed of and gotten rid of and everything. Body parts are gone and all this other kind of stuff. And then um, when they come to arrest him, it turns, I'm not going to give the rest of it away, but uh, you know, it turns out he's actually got, you know, a couple more, you know, tricks up his sleeve. So, um, so yeah, I don't really want to give the, the ending does have a little bit of a twist. That's why I don't want to give it away. So, but um, yeah, that's the movie uh, H6. Okay. This movie is, it, it does have a couple of moments of suspense. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty good. Um, it's not a particularly scary movie. This is more of a movie that's, it's meant to shock you. It's meant to be disturbing. And on that level, it works. It works really, really well. And the reason why is because, like I said a little while ago, is the actresses who play the, uh, you know, who play the prostitutes and the drug addicts that he picks up and everything else, they have, they're given moments where they can, you know, talk about who they are and kind of help you to relate to them as characters, like one one of the girls he's got strapped to the table, she's talking about how she was abused growing up and, and you know, because he's asking her, because she's got, you know, spike tracks on her arms and stuff, and he's asking her, like, how, why would you do that? How could you do that? What, what you know, possessed you to do these kind of things? And and um, she just goes on about, um, you know, like um, she grew up, she was abused, you know, nobody believed her. She had been, you know people only wanting her for her body and nobody gave a shit about her and everything else. And, you know, and, and, uh, she wants her mom and everything, you know, and, and he's all like, you'll be with your mom soon. And then he ends up, you know, cutting her apart with a chainsaw and stuff like that. So, but, um, yeah, there is definitely, you can definitely sense some hostile in this movie. You can sense like some, um, Henry portrait of a serial killer. You can sense some, uh, Texas chainsaw massacre, obviously, but, um, a little bit of psycho maybe. But uh, yeah, this movie, um, like I said, it's it's a good watch if you want something that is shocking. If you want like a shocking movie, a disturbing kind of movie, then this will work for you. Um, it is. It's unsettling. It's, like I said, there's a couple of moments of suspense, but it's not, you know, it's not really scary. It's not overall frightening or anything like that. It's disturbing and it's meant to be disturbing. So it's meant to to bother you and get under your skin. So if you like those kind of movies, then yeah, I would definitely say give this give this flick a watch it's it's pretty good so anyway that's going to do it we talked about h6 diary of a serial killer um if anybody took the time to watch this video i thank you for doing it and i appreciate you for doing it um i honestly hope you enjoyed the video um if you did and you're not already uh please like and subscribe to the body bags channel we got great videos um there's a video every day of the week there's a different reviewer for every day i'm the saturday reviewer and uh, again, I can't thank you enough for watching the video. This is Cinema 77, Horror and Cult Film Lover. I hope you enjoy the rest of the Body Bags week. Take care. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.